Nigeria has just unveiled its new advanced homemade drones, marking a major milestone in the country's ability to develop advanced defense technologies. In Brussels, a routine morning of intelligence briefings suddenly turned into shock for European defense circles. The files revealed something few would have believed just months ago. Nigeria had shaken the global defense industry. This is the same country long dismissed for its currency struggles and years of dependence on foreign military aid. Yet just recently, Nigeria delivered a surprise that went far beyond showcasing borrowed technology. Nigeria did more than merely display your technology. They essentially stated to the entire global arms business, we don't need you anymore. I will explain to you today why this is so much more than military considerations. We are discussing a reform that has the potential to permanently alter Africa's approach to the world. And the beginning of it all took place in a little known structure in Abuja. Let me now transport you back to 2014. Nigeria's north was in disarray. Those 276 girls from Chibu have just been taken by Boko Haram. Do you recall that? The entire globe was observing. Nigeria was rushing, and hashtags were all over the place. What then did they do? When danger arises, they take the same action as any other African nation. The Americans claimed they could deliver all of the $600 million Super Tucano jets they had bought to Nigeria in 18 months. It was seven years later, seven, in 2021, those planes made it to Nigeria. And what transpired while Nigeria waited? Areas larger than some European nations were overrun by terrorists. People endured hardships after they established their own empire. The money was right there in Nigeria. It was a completely different issue. You see, as an African nation, purchasing weaponry entails more than just purchasing electronics and metal. You're investing in a partnership. And there are rules in that connection. Yes, we will sell these weapons to you. The discussion continues. However, you elect us to the UN. You opened your markets to us. If you understand what I mean, you don't become overly autonomous. One defense minister, I heard, put it quite nicely. Why does every gun shop require us to compromise our sovereignty? Now consider that for a minute. If you wanted to fix your own fence, you would have to ask your neighbor each time. That's the reality in Africa. However, you are aware of the adage regarding necessity. Everyone believed that April 3, 2025, was just another Thursday morning in Abuja until Nigeria displayed the Danza attack drone. And I'm not referring to anything they licensed from Turkey or assembled from Chinese components. I'm referring to products that were created, constructed, and tested in Nigeria. One of General Christopher Musa's remarks truly resonated with me. Countries that don't manufacture such solutions are forced to deal with diplomatic obstacles and bureaucratic delays in order to obtain these vital platforms in a world where international politics surrounding the acquisition of cutting-edge military equipment, especially combat drones, have grown increasingly complex. Even with your money on hand, you will be detained any time you need them if you don't deliver what you need. However, Allow me to explain why this drone is so significant. It's what it stands for, not just that it exists. In addition to precision aiming, real-time satellite communication, and 14 hours in the air, the best part is that it was specifically designed for Nigerian circumstances. This device was made specifically for the harsh conditions found in those thick forests where bandits hide, the rivers where oil thieves work, and the heat that causes foreign technology to break down. Then contrast that with the Turkish barracks that everyone has been purchasing. Please understand that quick drones are designed for Turkish weather, situations, issues, and terrain. What about the difference in price? Nigeria receives 60% of its sovereign expenses, 60%. However, there's something going on here that the news outlets didn't cover at all. Nigeria discreetly constructed something far more hazardous to the current state of affairs and the ecology as a whole, while everyone's attention was on the shiny new drone. 
consider one of their defense businesses, the EIB Group. They currently employ more than a thousand individuals. The important thing is that the majority of these people are out in the field with real soldiers, learning what works, what breaks, and what is required, rather than sitting behind desks. Do you know how Ukraine has been using drones to fend off Russia? Nigeria has been keeping an eye on everything and making notes. They are now the same swift FPV drones that changed the course of that conflict. They are now producing high-tech guns in addition to drones. Their own take on the AK-103 is the DG-103. Even bulletproof vests and armored cars are manufactured domestically. Now this man from the EIB, Bride Chufu, said something that would have sounded absurd. Nigeria no longer needs to rely on any other nation for security, as of five years ago. Absolutely not. Those are bold words, aren't they? Here's what got my interest, though. The outcomes. In 2022, there were more than 100,000 barrels of oil stolen every day. Huge issue. 5,000 barrels of oil each day now. The daily output increased from 1.1 1 million to 1.75 million barrels. It might just be a coincidence, but when you see weapons mentioned in operation reports and hear military leaders discussing force multipliers and improved capabilities, you begin to question whether or not this stuff is real. That's when the international defense industry began to worry. When you play chess with someone, have they ever abruptly revealed that they have been using entirely different rules the entire time? Nigeria merely did that because there is much more to the tale than just one nation producing a weapon. In actuality, Nigeria only poses the query that keeps defense contractors awake at night. What if we are no longer needed by anyone? As I read through the reports from the African Chiefs of Defense Staff meetings, I noticed that each nation dispatched representatives to Nigeria's booth to place orders rather than merely browse. Why? Nigerian guns are purchased in local currency, function well in African environments, and are free of political baggage. By producing these drones domestically, Nigeria lessens its reliance on outside resources, guarantees timely accusations, and improves its capacity to react quickly to security issues. Do you wish to purchase American goods? Are you familiar with the Chukano jets? Let's just disregard that one more time. You must ensure that their examination of the human rights record is successful. Chinese? I hope the strings attached don't bother you. Russian? If you're not on your friends list, good luck. Nigerian? Is your money doing well? This is your receipt. Now picture yourself seeing a $20 billion yearly market from a seat in Beijing or Washington. Look elsewhere and quickly get your attention. However, something even more significant is taking place. Nigeria is promoting itself as the provider for everyone else, not merely attempting to displace international suppliers. When Ghana discovers that Nigeria can supply drones that can function in the humid conditions of West Africa, what will happen? The dependable African arms industry suddenly loses its credibility when Kenya discovers that Nigerian competitors may be more appropriate for their circumstances than European ones. And the part about the large players that is really frightening. Why can't other countries do this if Nigeria can? But let's face it, making guns legally is one thing, but employing them successfully is quite another. The rubber meets the road there. Nigeria is still in danger. Bandits in the north, pipeline thieves in the south, and terrorists in the northeast. All of this discussion turns into costly showboating if these domestic weapons are unable to meet these threats. However, early indications have been encouraging. Tracking down terrorist camps has been more successful for forces utilizing Nigerian drones. The governor of Plateau State declared in public that his region was safer thanks to these drones. This is what truly drew my attention. Nigerian AK-103s have been found in the hands of bandits. Take a moment to consider that. These weapons are so effective that those they are intended to stalk want to use them as well. Here's what I continue to ponder though. What happens if Nigeria wins? 
What if they use their own weaponry to solve their terrorism issues? Because at that point, the same question will be asked in every other African nation. Why can't we protect ourselves with indigenous weaponry if Nigeria can? And the entire game changes when that question is sufficiently asked. The adage a lion doesn't borrow claws comes to mind. But what if Africa makes the decision to develop its own claws? This is when the exciting part begins. What if Africa didn't simply adopt Nigeria's strategy on its own? What if they work together? I am referring about an African defense production cooperation of sorts. Imagine NATO, but for the construction of weapons, rather than their use. Imagine that each African nation contributes 1% of its GDP to a common defense fund, which provides $20 billion for research and development each year, more than enough to finance significant innovation. After then, regional centers are established. Nigeria deals with tiny guns and drones. One of the most advanced and effective armored vehicles is used in South Africa. Today, South African armored vehicles served as the model for the MRAP. Egypt then engages in aerospace. Morocco focuses on online content. You can now negotiate fairly with countries like Brazil, India, and Turkey, nations that genuinely desire partnerships rather than dependencies, instead of being taken advantage of by old suppliers. The outcome? Africa develops its own security solutions that are financed by African resources, governed by African decisions, and tailored to African issues. Doesn't that sound like a pipe dream? Perhaps, but Nigeria has already demonstrated that the fundamental idea works. They demonstrated that African nations are capable of creating, constructing, and utilizing cutting-edge military technology. Whether other African leaders have the foresight to recognize what Nigeria saw and the guts to take action is the question at hand. Without a doubt, these are extremely powerful individuals who benefit from Africa's continued dependence, and they will not give up their market easily. This is where we are then. Africa is at a turning point in its history, and the choice made will determine whether the continent remains a consumer or becomes a producer. Either path one or path two then. Nigeria's breakthrough on path one remains isolated. Other nations that lack political will and are under pressure from established suppliers will continue to purchase foreign weapons with conditions. Africa is still fragile, reliant, and under control. Nigeria's example spreads on path two. Countries begin to share technologies, engage in domestic defense manufacturing and establish true security independence. Africa starts to manufacture its own security products. Which way seems better now? The second, of course. Here's the truth though. When powerful interests profit from current structures, change is difficult. The conventional arms exporters did not spend decades establishing connections and relationships in order to abandon a $20 billion business. They'll resist. They'll provide better bargains. They will try to portray independence as dangerous, difficult, and superfluous. Here's what gives me hope, though. The security situation in Africa is becoming worse rather than better. Climate walls, marine piracy, cross-border terrorism, and the Sile Dilemma all require African answers, developed by Africans who are aware of African reality. Nigeria demonstrated that it is feasible. Whether the rest of the continent has the spine to follow through is the true question. So, from where you're observing, what does this mean to you? Ask your leaders some tough questions if you're an African. Why don't we make investments in domestic defense manufacturing? Why do we continue to bargain over our security with those who take advantage of us? If you're from the diaspora, try to find ways to help businesses and projects that are developing the technological potential of Africa. The spark that ignites a continental shift could be your investment. And if you're observing from a distance, know that this alters Africa's interactions with the outside world. The continent may defend itself without authorization. Additionally, Africa that manufactures its own security solutions treats everyone equally rather than as a client in need. Something significant is revealed by Nigeria's breakthrough. 
the continent may defend itself without authorization. There is the technology. There are the talents. There are resources. All that remains is whether Africa will decide to make use of what it has or continue to rely on those who benefit from that reliance. What are your thoughts? Are we witnessing the start of a military comeback in Africa? Or will internal opposition and external pressure maintain the status quo? Leave your comments below. And if this helps you see things differently, tell someone who needs to hear this viewpoint.